This week we're going to look at Nietzsche's legacy, the effect that he's had on modern thought. The first lecture we will look at Nietzsche and his sister and also at the Nazis. In the second lecture we will look at Nietzsche and his effect on modern philosophy and then finally in the last lecture we're going to look at some particular examples of individuals and their work that have been influenced by Nietzsche. Nietzsche has been incredibly significant for modern thought, as we can probably tell from the fact that we're studying him. Heidegger claimed that everyone who thinks today does so in Nietzsche's light and shadow, whether they are for him or against him. He influenced philosophy, psychology, art and literature. And of course, we know that he has been linked to the Nazis. He influenced the Serbian nationalists who killed Franz Ferdinand. He was an influence for Hitler and the Nazis and for Mussolini and the fascists and is still claimed by the alt-right today. If we are to understand Nietzsche and why he was linked to the Nazis, we need to understand some more about his sister Elizabeth. His sister Elizabeth married Bernhard Forster, and he was a well-known anti-Semite. They moved to Paraguay to attempt to start up a pure German colony, but the colony failed and Forster committed suicide in 1889. Elizabeth then abandoned the colony and took over the care of Nietzsche. Now you'll notice that 1889, when Forster committed suicide, was the same year as Nietzsche's breakdown. Elizabeth became his guardian and the owner of his copyrights and she assumed legal rights over his work in 1889. So you can see that that happened really very quickly. She set up an archive of his work and she even allowed people to come in and view him after his breakdown. When Nietzsche died, Nietzsche had requested a pagan funeral but Elizabeth Nietzsche actually arranged a full... Lutheran funeral for him instead. Nietzsche's book The Will to Power was actually put together by his sister Elizabeth. After his breakdown Elizabeth reordered Nietzsche's notes into The Will to Power and it was first published in 1901. Now this actually included discarded notes that Nietzsche had made and Elizabeth dismissed any notes that she disagreed with that didn't fit in with her agenda. The book uses the will to power and the eternal, eternal recurrence as central ideas rather than in relation to the revaluation of values. So there is debate over whether this book should be used for serious study because it was not created by Nietzsche but very much in line with how his sister Elizabeth wanted us to see him and his thought. The link to the Nazis then comes through Elizabeth. During the First World War, Elizabeth said that Nietzsche would have been an imperialist and she argued that he would have supported the German cause and she sent copies of Thus Spoke Zarathustra to the truth. She made contact with the Italian fascist dictator Mussolini. Uh, Mussolini, uh, when he read Nietzsche's work, thought that he himself was an example of an Ubermensch. And she put on a play by Mussolini at the Nietzschean archive and it was there that she met Hitler. Nietzsche became the official um, philosopher of the Nazi party and the links that Nietzsche had with Wagner helped to create a link with the Nazis in the public mind. The Nazis printed small anthologies of Nietzsche's work but it was cherry-picking quotes that supported their agenda. Now it has been argued that the Nazis actually would have arrested Nietzsche had he been alive during the Second World War for his anti-German comments if that was when he'd been writing. But they used his work to support their ideas by picking out the bits that suited them. It, ha it has been argued that the rhetoric of Nietzsche in regard to Christianity is actually similar in style to Hitler writing about the Jews. But the difference of course is in their solutions Hitler, as we know, had a final solution in mind, whereas Nietzsche wanted a revaluation of values. So there's a rather big difference there. So why did Nietzsche appeal to the Nazis? Why were they so keen on Nietzsche? 
Well, he'd caught the attention of Alfred Baumler, who lived from 1887 to 1968, and he published Nietzsche, the philosopher and politician, in 1931. Now, he edited Nietzsche's works and he wrote for the general public, and he focused very much on the will to power and also the concept of the Ubermensch. And he applied the role of the Ubermensch to the German people in that he saw them as being the future leaders of Europe. So, of course, the question that we need to ask is, was Nietzsche a Nazi? Do his ideas really fit in with the Nazi agenda? Well, Nietzsche was against nationalism, as we've seen from his readings. He was interested in the idea of a good European. He valued culture over politics and he rejected the modern bureaucratic state because he saw it as stifling. As we know from his work on art, he valued creativity and he also valued individualism, which doesn't really fit in with National Socialism. And of course, as we know, he completely rejected anti-Semitism and was very against it. So there's a lot in Nietzsche's work that is actually not in line with Nazi thinking at all. Nietzsche's work was and is very open to interpretation, which is one of the reasons that he is picked up on by people with quite extreme political opinions. This doesn't necessarily mean that he is a Nazi. It is worth noting, however, that the elements that the Nazis picked up on that there is not a complete lack of basis for his link to far-right ideologies. He was, of course, an elitist, and there are elements within the will to power and the Ubermensch that do lend themselves to those ideologies. However, as we've seen, it's unfair to say that Nietzsche was a Nazi when there are so many elements of his work that go against that thought. And we have a quote here from a paper by White, which says, Brumler's depiction of Nietzsche was certainly one-sided and myopic, but it was neither incoherent nor absurd. So there was some basis for the way that the Nazis used Nietzsche. However, it's not a fair representation of his work or his thought. 